Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day to start things off. Despite the small uptick in valuation for Bitcoin over the past week, a new study out of analytics firm Juniper Research states that the cryptocurrency market looks in danger of imploding with a gradual decrease in transaction volumes being cited as the main evidence for such a concern. First reported by Bloomberg on the 9th of October, Juniper Research reports that the decline in daily transaction volume for Bitcoin and other larger named cryptocurrencies is an overwhelmingly negative signal for the valuation of the industry, with quarter over quarter transactions plummeting throughout the year. As Bloomberg points out, the report by Juniper echoes that of other mainstream analysts in calling for a looming implosion for Bitcoin and the wider cryptocurrency market, with their current metrics and analysts pointing to further decline. According to the study, Bitcoin daily transaction volumes have fallen from an average of 360,000 per day at the end of 2017 to 230,000 per day as of September 2018, constituting a 36% decrease in activity. In addition to low trade volume, daily transaction values also plummeted during that time, dropping from 3.7 billion to less than 670 million. However, while Bitcoin does show a steep decline in trade volume and transaction value, the entire cryptocurrency market has seen a widespread contradiction from late 2017 as the market continues to undergo a severe and prolonged bear cycle. At the end of 2017, Bitcoin was trading at almost 20,000 a coin in addition to a bullish run for most of the altcoin market, constituting much higher daily transaction values. Cryptocurrency was also more prominent in the national spotlight during that time with popular mainstream news outlets reporting on the daily price leaps and overnight riches made through the cryptocurrency market. The end result was a flood of new investors, as reported by Coinbase, when their customer base rose above 13 million, or greater than that of a longtime stock brokerage, Charles Schwab. The influx of investors could have accounted for the massively elevated transaction volume and valuation, which has subsequently eroded throughout 2018, along with the falling of prices of crypto. Uh, here's where it gets a little bit important. It says in a white paper that accompanied the research article, an analyst for Juniper expanded on the group's beliefs that the crypto markets will continue to exhibit quarter over quarter losses. They said, based on activity during the first half of quarter three, Juniper estimates a further 47% quarter on quarter drop in transaction values in that quarter. With the ongoing price depression for Bitcoin and greater altcoin market, combined with the precip precipitous fall in transaction values and valuation, Juniper predicts that cryptocurrency is in for hard times ahead with a relative market implosion looming on the horizon. They said, in short, given our concern around both the innate valuation of Bitcoin and of the operating practices of many exchanges, we feel that the industry is on the brink of an implosion, end quote. So this is interesting for a number of reasons, and I feel like the timing of this uh, kind of makes a bit of sense. In that, I don't know if you have all been noticing the last week or so, I've seen an explosion of cryptocurrency channels and forums and websites and blogs and vlogs and whatever other way people are making their cryptocurrency news where they're constantly talking about that the crypto market is about to explode. Things are going to go much higher. A lot of people, when they hear news uh, like what I just went through, uh, they think that it indicates that the market is about to go back up and therefore the other people are trying to uh, fake them out or they're lying to them in that saying that you know things are going to uh, go south when they could be going north. I think that we've had so many people in the market who have been saying for such a long time that prices are going to go one way. I think uh, that something completely different could happen. Uh, when too many people are hyping up that something is about to happen, that prices are about to go completely insane, uh, that we're about to have riches and things are about to get so much better. I saw someone else talking about uh, get ready for this week because it's Lambo time. And I sat there and I'm like, First of all, you shouldn't be saying things like that uh, because no one knows exactly where the market is going to move. You may have noticed a couple of months ago, we had a lot of other people who were also noting that uh, the a lot of people aren't paying attention to exactly what's happening in crypto. Uh, and that's not even saying the actual like updates and upgrades and what the teams are doing. A lot of people don't realize that a large number of people have left crypto and the people who are trying to get into it are buying over the counter, but the volumes have been decreasing so much 
uh, and I'm and I'm going to get to a couple of things uh, as I continue on in this video, and you'll understand a bit more. Uh, something is definitely changing. I tried to explain before in like in earlier videos uh, how I felt about 2018. We've also had other people who are talking about that they don't think that the market is going to move at all in 2018. On the contrary, I've seen numbers anywhere as low as like 4,500 per Bitcoin. And I think the lowest that we've seen someone talk about was 1,000. I don't, I, uh, 1,000 is, is, is a bit of a major stretch. Uh, but the the numbers that a lot of people were confident about for a very long time, ever since around April, I remember I said these numbers and people said that doesn't make any sense. Why would we ever get there? This was also around the time when Bitcoin was anywhere between like eight to twelve thousand. It was fluctuating like rapidly around that time, and people said that it's impossible for the Bitcoin price to go down that low. And people were also the the point is. Uh, a lot of analysts have been checking because, you know, we aren't the only ones in the market anymore. It's now big money and, and people are paying other researchers to do this research for them to figure out uh, the daily growth, the daily trends, uh, what is happening, what is not happening, who's getting into it and who's trading what and how trading is happening. Even uh, Coinbase uh, has reported a couple of weeks ago that uh, rather they partially announced uh, that their trading volume was a bit lower or something like that. And then someone actually did an analysis and they showed that uh, Coinbase's market share of the entire cryptocurrency market, as in Coinbase was the number one thing, has been taken over by multiple other exchanges. And it's not even that uh, they've taken the exact slice of pie. It's that uh, those slices are also getting a lot smaller because what I've... I'll just tell you what I've been reading, what I've been seeing, as opposed to uh, kind of skipping over it because I guess it is important. Uh, a lot of... Remember... I was talking about uh, actual use cases and stuff like that. A lot of people have been talking negatively about Bitcoin and Ethereum for the quite a couple of months now. And um, there's a shifting sentiment for these coins. And I'm not personally aware as to why this is happening. Uh, you may have noticed there is almost like a like a feel good feeling around Cardano, EOS, and Tron, and like a couple of other projects and stuff. Uh, the the first three coins completely aside, uh, something is happening. I'm not exactly sure what. Uh, there seems to be, and I'm not, re like I said, not really sure why there has been such negativity around Bitcoin. Everyone knows that it's slow. Everyone knows that it's not uh, scaling properly. Get it, got it, good. Uh, but the idea has been for quite some time that Bitcoin is going to be digital gold. But even when you see at a lot of events or like uh, international monetary fund meetings and stuff like that, uh, they talk negatively about privacy coins. They uh, talk optimistically about certain cryptocurrencies. Uh, but then Bitcoin and Ethereum kind of always get like the back end as if like, you know, yeah, they exist. That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, but they don't really um make an impact so something is happening we've been uh i mean whether you want to believe that an implosion is impending it's kind of up to you like i always say no one knows exactly where the market is going to move uh but i thought it was a very bad indication that a number of people had come forward the last week and a half two weeks talking about uh that last saturday and sunday we were going to have a major uh, explosion of prices. Guys, get ready to be rich. Uh, the same thing was echoed on Monday. And now everyone is constantly talking about the exact same news that now it's no longer shifted from last weekend. It's now sometime during this week that Bitcoin is going to shoot up by 25%. <sighs> I, I, I mean, I feel like myself from what I've been reading and what I've been seeing is that Bitcoin... Uh, how do I say this? Like... And I know people are going to hate me and it, it's it's so frustrating because I try to make sure that I give you not only the news that's out there so you're well aware of exactly what's happening in the cryptocurrency space, but also my personal feelings because I'm not just like I'm not just doing the videos and then that's all I, you know, I'm I'm done with crypto during the entire day. Like I, I continuously read nonstop and the sentiments that I'm getting around Bitcoin have become very negative and not exactly sure why. I'm not exactly sure if... I don't know. The, the the people who are uh, creating the infrastructure for the future of cryptocurrencies, whether they have just decided to switch to another coin. Uh, but a lot of it is like fairly obvious for me that something is taking place in the background. Who knows exactly what's going to happen, but let's move on from this. Next up, Coinbase is in the news. A senior executive of the U.S.-based crypto exchange Coinbase 
has said that he is confident the firm will receive an operating license in Japan next year, even while regulators in the country are stepping up scrutiny of cryptocurrency exchanges. Mike Lempris, chief policy officer of Coinbase, said that the process of getting a license is going well with the Financial Services Agency or the FSA. Nikkei Asian Review reported on Wednesday. He added that the company is committed to getting it done, which will certainly be done in 2019. The company announced its plan to enter the Japanese market in 2016 and appointed former Morgan Stanley Japan staffer Nao Kitazawa to head its office in June. As Coindesk reported last month, Lempris has moved on from his previous role as the chief legal officer for the exchange and now works on government affairs. He said that security is currently the top concern at the FSA, which regulates Japan's financial markets, follows two crypto exchanges, hacks in the nation last year, CoinCheck in January, and Zyph in September. The FSA has not yet issued any crypto exchange licenses so far this year, despite having reviewed 16 applications. Meanwhile, more than 160 firms, including public companies, are planning to apply for licenses, as Coindesk has reported. Uh, one, Coinbase and many other cryptocurrency exchanges like I predicted many months ago, uh, while Coinbase is still going to have firm roots and a firm grasp in the U.S. market, uh, after listening to a couple of podcasts, I was listening to a podcast a earlier where they were talking about uh, Coinbase's solutions and what they're doing and how they're looking to expand. And there was also a video a couple of days ago, I can't remember where it was, where they were talking about, they were talking to a Coinbase staffer or someone who was in Coinbase and they were discussing how difficult it's been, you know, while trying to still smile while they're doing it uh, with the SEC and the CFTC, how they've tried their hardest in the nicest way possible to uh, get them to try and move forward to give them some type of indication as to exactly what's going to happen within the United States space as far as what is a security and what is not a security. Uh, and I feel... Uh, I want to say I feel bad for them. Like Coinbase isn't a bad company and they're in a very tight spot. The the people who were talking on both of these things, they were saying that Coinbase desperately wants to add new tokens. Uh, and they kind of mentioned this is why they have uh, thought about adding potentially the other five that they were talking about, uh, you know, Cardano, XLM, blah, 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 Zcash, so-and-so, uh, simply because they're trying to find any type of uh, doorway to add more assets. They said if they wanted to, they would add as many as possible. Uh, but with the SEC taking their uh, sweet time, it's a very big problem for them. So I think the way that they're going to get around this is, is not only trying to expand... Uh, within the U.S., but I think they're definitely going to make a or try to have a dominant presence in many other, any other uh, countries. I think Coinbase, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, is also trying to expand to the United Kingdom. Uh, they're trying to nicely get away, if that makes a lot of sense. A lot of the other exchanges who have also uh, launched in the United States have also mentioned or uh, noted that they're trying to... Uh, have a larger presence overseas because other countries don't have this same exact problem. Uh, and I'm going to speculate that by, first of all, I have lost all hope for the SEC at this point. I, I, I'm not exactly sure what's up with them, what's wrong with them. I uh, lost all hope. I, I assume mid-2025 we'll get some type of information from them. One of the main reasons I believe that Coinbase is actually trying to move to Japan is because Japan is a lot less. Uh, so when it comes to actually like... Uh, regulation and security japan is completely on top of it they make sure that everything is this way but as far as like listing coins i think this will be the first step that coinbase will actually be able to i have a feeling if they do get this license we're going to have information that coinbase is uh listing 25 new coins they're going to make they they're going to say this on their twitter but they're going to make sure to note that it's happening overseas remember a couple of weeks months ago actually we had news that coinbase was uh thinking about adding other coins but they said that some of them would not be available in all jurisdictions I don't know if you remember that. It kind of makes sense now. Uh, it'll just probably, it's, it's sad. It'll probably just be the United States who is out of the running for any type of thing that they end up adding. Uh, we know that Coinbase at some point is going to add XRP. And I think it's not even XRP anymore. I think they see that their market share is going down and they're going to try and desperately add as many coins as completely possible. So I am going to assume that by the time Coinbase actually uh, gets this, launches in Japan, they're going to add all the coins that we've wanted them to add for quite some time. But once again, the U.S. is going to be shut out of this. And this is why I think this move is happening. Kind of crazy. 
So this is going to be a uh, um, a warning, I think. Uh, s- hmm. Remember the last couple of weeks we were talking about, uh, rather I said months ago, I think there's going to be like a, a backwards collapse in the market. And then a couple of days ago, we also had news that uh, another cryptocurrency exchange was also delisting coins and other this was happening a lot of other exchanges have been saying that you know you have until november 1st or you have until this date to uh take these off of the cryptocurrency exchanges uh this is uh, i'm, I'm going to read through it and tell you exactly what's happening so it says as of yesterday the 9th of october binance one of the world's largest and most popular cryptocurrency exchanges has announced that they will be delisting four tokens from their trading platform until further notice the announcement was made early yesterday morning on the exchange's website and stated that due to the Binance's team's dedication to protecting the safety of their users, they would be delisting Bytecoin, Chatcoin, Economy, and Triggers. The release of the notice has sent most of the coins crashing down pretty hard. In the press release, the team affirmed their dedication to keeping their clients and users safe and explained that to maintain this level of user safety, The team regularly conducts comprehensive reviews of the digital assets listed on the platform. They also mentioned that when certain coins or tokens fall below a certain level of quality, they are either reviewed in depth or delisted entirely from the exchange. This practice allows them to maintain some quality when it comes to the coins endorsed by the exchange. The release of the announcement has undoubtedly sent some of the coins crashing down. Something that we see very often with the delistings, especially from major crypto exchanges. This is just another proof of how cryptocurrencies prices are closely related to the listings on major exchanges, which in turn kind of says a lot of the coins, their prices are more or less inflated. Like your coin should be doing pretty okay, even if you are not like on a, on a daily worldwide basis. Uh, if you get delisted and your coin comes down crashing, that means that your price was more or less inflated, which is what a lot of people believe that the prices are right now. But... Back to the topic. Uh, these are being listed once again. There's a Bitcoin, Chatcoin, Economy, I C O N O M I, and Triggers. Uh, so there's a there is a crusade. I guess that's the nicest way of saying it against coins that uh, uh, I don't want to say aren't good. There's only so much space in the box. That's the kind of the easiest way of saying it. And a lot of coins have been attacked and they're going to be attacked or they're going to be delisted. And this is kind of where part two of this all comes in. It says Spank Chain, a cryptocurrency focused on the adult industry, has suffered a breach that saw almost $40,000 worth of Ethereum tokens stolen. In a blog post published on Tuesday, the Spank Chain team disclosed the hack saying 165 Ethereum, worth around $38,000 at the time, had been lost at around 18 o'clock on Saturday. The intrusion, which the post said was made possible by a bug in the network's payment system, smart contract, also caused caused $4,000 in Spank Chain's booty token to be frozen. It apparently took over 24 hours for the project to realize the hack had taken place, with the post stating, unfortunately, as we were in the middle of investigating other smart contract bugs, we didn't realize the hack had taken place until 7 p.m. on Sunday, at which point we took Spank Live offline to prevent any additional funds from being deposited into the payment channel smart contract. What's happening now is, in my opinion, as a as a humble uh, crypto person, remember we had news before about four weeks ago at this point where people or rather organizations or hackers were coming forward talking about that they were going to start attacking other coins. I think a lot of it is coming down to uh, there are too many coins in the cryptocurrency space. A lot of them have extremely low value uh, value and volume. That's not to say that this coin in particular. Uh, it comes down to there are other coins that want to be noticed. There are other coins who are attacking other coins. And at any moment that they could figure out a way to attack them or even delist them from cryptocurrency exchanges, this is going to happen. And I think this is going to accelerate. If I could count all of the coins that have been attacked over the last couple of weeks, it has to be at least 17 in the amount of delistings. It has to be maybe around anywhere 20 
different coins. I mean, we have 2,000 something coins on on coin market caps. So, I mean, it's not the greatest thing in the entire world with how many coins that we still have. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people, and I don't know who's doing this. I mean, really, it feels like there's like a bit of desperation happening right now where someone is not hacking, but like targeting other coins that they don't think should exist simply because the market is oversaturated. And I told you guys before, a lot of the money that's in a lot of these other projects that no one's really doing anything with. Imagine if all that money had flown into the top 20 coins, how strong or much stronger the market would actually be. And on top of all of this as well, uh, we have news of this. It says, this is the other side of crypto. It's dark and full of dead coins. It keeps piling up every time Ethereum or Bitcoin print lower. Though the market is expecting a rally. Uh, I, oh my gosh. So that's a whole, I, I'll tell you about that in a second. Listing a couple of indicators to justify his bullish stand. Einsteinium coin creators and communities should be having a hard time. Long story short, without reading through the entire thing, someone came forward and said that they figured out uh, that they were probably going to, or that they maybe wanted to, or that they could have possibly done it, that if they wanted to launch a 51% attack on Einsteinium, that all it would take them would $20 would be the cost of doing this, and less than $200 to force a hard fork on Feathercoin, which would then allow them to print as many Feathercoin as they wanted to do so. There has uh, there's been a multitude of coins that we've heard of over the last couple of months. I don't know if you guys have been paying attention or maybe even if I, uh, so, sometimes I, you know, it's, it's not newsworthy, if you will, to talk about random coins that have had attacks against them, but there's been a huge amount of them. A lot of them have more or less, I mean, to be fair, the larger coins do also have attacks on them. Don't assume that no one is uh, planning to, or has never tried to attack the Bitcoin blockchain. The, the blockchain right now is so robust that it doesn't, uh, it kind of bounces off the blockchain. Uh, but other smaller coins are being hacked. They're being attacked. Uh, they're, they're being forced into hard forks. And this is happening because this is an easy way to defame the coin or say that something is wrong with the project. And I think even, uh, what was it? Coin market cap, I think announced that they were trying to, uh, going to try and maybe try and figure out a way to be more selective with the coins that they're adding. Uh, I know it's not just me. I'm sure you understand exactly what I'm saying when it comes to all of this. There's been a lot of this happening. I don't know if, if you know, there's there's so many ICOs and new coins trying to launch or trying to get their feet off the ground or saying that they're better than this or that they're going to do this and how amazing they are. Uh, but overall, uh, a lot of older, not, not, not even older, a lot of cryptocurrencies that people aren't really using and don't really hear about or have heard of, uh, they're going to be attacked and is going. this is going to continue. Uh, I'll try. I mean, if something is like very significant, I'll try and bring you like another batch of news like this where I talk about the things that are happening. Uh, but believe me, this is going to continue happening because there's just a lot of projects out there. Anyway, let's move on. Next up, cryptocurrencies and digital assets are not currently a threat to global financial stability. The Financial Stability Board, or the FSB, stated in a report published on Wednesday, titled Crypto Asset Markets, Potential Channels for Future Financial Stability Implications. The document comes after a month-long dive by the international organization into what effect, if any, the nascent asset class might have on global financial stability. In a press release, the FSB, which is currently, which is hosted and funded by the Bank of International Settlements, Summarize its result viewing that cryptocurrencies are not an effective means of payment, store of value, or unit of account. In particular, the release said cryptocurrencies face issues with low liquidity, market risks from volatility, and operational risks among other concerns. The report said, based on the available information, crypto assets do not pose a material risk to global financial stability at this time. However, vigilant monitoring is needed in the light of the speed of market developments. Should the use of crypto assets continue to evolve, it could have implications for financial stability in the future. This is maybe the third or fourth organization who has said something like this within the last three or four months as well. Uh, there have been a lot of, one, we have that organization in China, uh, even though cryptocurrency is banned in China, who has been coming forward with like ratings of cryptocurrencies. This has been happening in, mo in most every single country. I think definitely governments are trying to figure out a way to uh, figure out 
uh, what cryptocurrencies are, how exactly they're working, and what risk, if any, there could be when it comes to the uh, if 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 they could knock the current financial system on its head. Uh, they all come to the same exact conclusion that crypto is far too young. But one of the main things that they keep saying is uh, just in case crypto could become something very serious in the future. Uh, I kind of like and dislike things like this simply because I like when uh, organizations talk about the growth of cryptocurrencies and say that it's not a threat. Uh, that gives us a bit more time to kind of uh, uh, stay a bit behind the, you know, in, in the in the shadows and uh, continue to develop the cryptocurrency community. But on the other hand, it's like they kind of not look down on us. Uh, I don't know what I'm really trying to say here. But this is uh, something quite interesting. We've heard this from like major uh, like banks and all this other stuff as well. They're all really looking into it. Uh, who knows exactly what's going to happen? But anyway, let's move on. Last up for today, Bitcoin Cash Evangelist and Bitcoin.com owner Roger Ver. How he how how lucky he got to actually have that domain name. It's considering launching a cryptocurrency exchange that would use Bitcoin Cash as its base currency. The controversial Bitcoin promoter, once known as uh, Bitcoin Jesus, sure, for his early support in the cryptocurrency's years before last year's Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash divorce, told Bloomberg that if his company wanted to, it could build an exchange really, really cheap. He said, if we build it ourselves, we can do it really, really cheap and we get exactly what we want but we don't have the security of a battle-tested exchange that's been around for a while. The plans for the cryptocurrency exchange are still in the early stages, and Vare said that he has not decided whether to build it internally from the ground up or seek to acquire a platform that is already up and running. Either way, he said that the exchange would be hosted at Bitcoin.com, which already operates a mining pool and a cryptocurrency wallet that supports both Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. Last November, the firm sparked criticism by quietly updating the Bitcoin.com wallet to default to Bitcoin Cash rather than Bitcoin, which critics said could be confusing to the new cryptocurrency users who stumbled upon the website by conducting a Google search for Bitcoin. Like I said, the fact that he owns that name is incredibly insane. I don't know if he's going to actually create it. I, I, he's probably going to. Uh, Roger Ver, don't know him. I've heard through the grapevine that he's a bit of a character. Uh, he is a he's very much into Bitcoin Cash. I wouldn't see a reason why he would not create his own cryptocurrency exchange. And I mean, at this point, <clears throat> uh, you should be able to do what you want. Like, you know, if he has the money for it, go for it. Make a new cryptocurrency exchange if it's going to be popular and if it'll add liquidity to the cryptocurrency market. By all means, go for it. If you think your coin, or rather, if you think that another coin that you own is superior to Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Cash being uh, listed as the uh, as the base currency on that website should not scare you at all because, it, you know, your coin is superior. Uh, I don't know if this is going to happen. Roger Ver has been in the news the last couple of days. He had a a discussion with Charlie Lee where they were talking about the future of cryptocurrencies and just a lot of. I mean, it was if for the, if you get a chance and you're you're able to find the actual discussion online, it just was magical. The stuff that they were talking about. Uh, two very controversial people in the cryptocurrency space right now. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Roger Ver might be creating his own crypto exchange. I wonder if uh, people will actually use it. All right, everybody. That is definitely going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, and or evening. Wherever you are, wherever you might be, I hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you once again for watching and or listening. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all soon. See you.